Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting with a nice moonlit seascape. It should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these and you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. I'm just finishing up putting on a little bit of clear gel and just a little white, not much, but a little clear gel and white on the top two thirds of the canvas. You see, I don't have very many colors out. I need some probably need some green and some brown, but I'm just, I might get them out later. I don't want to do it right this second. I'm going to go ahead and paint in our night sky. So I got some blue, black, and red. And I'm going to start here at the top. Oh, this is going to be nice. Now, I, I already hear it. I hear people asking me why I'm not, uh, why I'm not using a black canvas. I haven't really used a black canvas in a long time, but you certainly could. I it's just not something that I have on hand. There, but you'll see with the oil paints, they cover really well and you don't actually, you don't actually need one. All right, this is gonna be one of those night scenes that has not too much black in it, actually. I'm gonna lighten a lot of this up. I don't want a lot of black in this today. So that's pretty easy though. You can just grab your white, maybe start, oh, we could maybe grab a little red and white and just start right down here somewhere. Also don't have a, a bit of masking tape. Now that's just because I don't, couldn't really find any <laughs> and I just wanted to start painting so that's just that's okay we'll be we'll be okay hopefully all right we'll blend this together really well so you don't see the different colors you just see a soft almost airbrushed look now we want our moon somewhere right in this area not too far to the middle you know kind of somewhere if you cut the middle in half maybe right about there the reason I'm putting it there it just seems like a Seems like a really natural spot. It's not too far to the right that it won't be able to illuminate our little seascape. There, so you can literally just sort of smoosh this paint right in. But that's a little too white for me. I think we should add a little more blue. This is not, well, at least I want to try not to make it a dull seascape, you know, a dull night scene. I want this to be a very lively, very colorful night scene, which I know you can't see color at night. You can actually see a little color on a full moon, despite what anybody says, because I've, I've looked. <laughs> but anyway, there you go. That looks pretty decent. Now I've got the filbert brush loaded here, and I'm gonna kinda do my best to get it right in the middle of this spot. I'm going to set the brush down, and then just twist it in a circle like that. Not a bad moon. Gets you a pretty good circle. It really does. I've got a pink color right now. I wanted a yellow moon, but I don't think I want it in this step. I think what I want to do is I want to come back with a detail brush later on after I get this kind of established. And that way I can just sneak a little bit of orange right on top, a little bit of yellow, because you'll notice that the stiff bristle brush cuts right through, but that's good enough for now. We can always, you know, build that up later if we need to. We don't necessarily want to go too bright too quickly. And it's fairly large for me. I don't paint, you know, giant moons usually. This is fairly large for me. <laughs> there. I like it though. It's, ooh, it's nice. All right, we'll need to add to that with the detail brush, but I, I want to get the clouds in next. So let's just grab a nice soft blue. Honestly, you don't really need to worry about it too much. And we'll just scrub some clouds in and we'll highlight with <laughs> leftovers. Just highlight with leftovers. I, I did wipe the entire canvas off before blending a second time. And that's the reason why I'm able to do this right here. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and sketched out a nice little wave and I spent just a few minutes. It wasn't as hard as I thought to draw in a nice straight horizon and just filled it in with a little color. The canvas is still dry here at the bottom, no medium. So this paint actually is very difficult to scrub onto the canvas. But as a general, uh, general rule, the harder it is to put the paint on the canvas, the first coat, the easier the rest of the painting is going to be. So it's kind of up to you. Do you want to struggle, you know, just scrubbing this in or do you want to struggle with the highlights? I don't know. For me, it's not a, it's not a very difficult decision. All right. Let's see, maybe up here a little bit of a wave action, just trying to establish a little feeling of, of some waves. That's all. Fairly dark out here, not, not too much going on. Yeah, 
we are going to have a rock that sticks up over here, maybe some little weeds and stuff over here, definitely some land. Uh, so this, you know, that little bit of horizons doesn't really matter. It's not that prominent. Okay. We'll just go ahead and continue kind of working out the little details here. We get a nice bright color. This is not, this is not going to be a dark wave. Let's get some nice bright blue going on in here. It's close enough to this moon that we can justify a little extra color. Plus it's our painting. If we don't want it totally dead, we don't have to make it that way. Nice. That looks good. And you may need to wipe this area before we do the eye of the wave. That's probably something I'm going to do here in just a second. But you see how you can bring that water right over. You can really move it around. Oils are so nice for this. So I squirted out a little fresh white here and I've got some brand new yellow and that's probably all we're going to need as far as extra colors. So we can make a green if you'd like. Just maybe a touch of green on a palm tree. Otherwise I wouldn't use it at all. Right? Cause there's not a lot of green in, in a night scene. All right. So I'm thinking let's go right here and just touch on that's almost a little too yellow, but I want some yellow in the moon maybe. So but I'm going to tone it down. It's a little too yellow for me. But there you go. It shows you how, how easy it is to switch things up just a, just a little. You don't need a lot of this bright color. In fact, if you do too much, it goes kind of sad. <laughs> it doesn't look so good there. It's very quickly transitioning into into the darker tones. Also, I wiped this off really well with a shop towel. I went out and bought a couple new rolls of shop towels, so I'm back in business. <laughs> and I wiped that off as well as I could. Boy, I, I get every little bit of paint off. And that helps because now I'm able to look at this paint all of these different layers and they stay intact. I did wiped all the way up under here. And now we can go with even deeper, deeper blue like this and really build those beautiful layers up. Oh yeah. Nice. Super, super fun. Anyway, and just like the sky, we'll blend this to where it's nice and smooth, but this is a good start. This little detail brush is pretty, really pretty, a, a good size. <laughs> Can't talk. That's a good size for this, isn't it? Now I'm going to go ahead and underpaint the water here in the foreground. I'm doing it extremely light. That's important because it's just like underpainting and you know, grass, you want the light area, which would, you know, in landscape would be in the back, but in our seascape, the light area is here in the middle. You want that light area underpainted, very light. And then the darks underpainted a little darker. And that gives you some depth built in before you even get to the highlighting stage, which of course is a big, big, key to success when you paint like this. It's super important that you have all of your tones and values established going in ahead of time on the highlight because you can't do it all in the highlight. Well, you can, but it looks like you did it all. You did it all in the highlight. You know, you want to see those tones underneath, like the built in tones is really, really important. It's very pretty when you do it. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> And that's why it's so light right here. And I want to cut this off. This wave's way too tall. I don't want that wave near that tall. So watch and just cut it off. Again, this is the underpainting. So we'll need to wipe it off with a shop towel as soon as I'm done putting it in. Now let's go ahead and drop in our rocks back here. We've been obviously planning these for quite a long time. And I went ahead and squared out a little umber when I was working on the sand down there. I think it'll be good in the rocks too. Well, I guess it just kind of goes to show you how much color we do use, even in the night scene. We have a pretty limited palette, which is nice. You don't have to buy a million colors to get started, right? Just a few. And you, then you learn, really, you learn to work with the colors that you have. And you can make literally, any, here's nothing that I've found that I couldn't make with these colors. So, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I haven't mixed every possible variation of every color I could imagine, but I mixed a lot of color and I, I, I got it. Everything I wanted to, I was able to get with just these few colors. So it was very powerful, you know, learning how to just do a little color mixing because then you don't have to buy a million colors. And I like that personally. 
cool. Can I get those? Those are big rocks, but maybe there's some cliffs here in the background. I'd like to do something like this. That'll allow us to grow some trees up on them. I think those will look really nice. The palette's getting really messy though. <laughs> get some, oh, there we go. Get some nice light fog kind of going on back up in here. And that'll be behind the splash of the wave. That's, that's important. Good. All right, just finished up here, putting in a nice soft, I'm mean, super soft background mountain. It may need to be darkened up a little, I don't know. But, put my blender brush back there. But I think that it just helps to kind of connect these areas. It was looking very much, you know, harsh big rock and harsh ocean. And this sort of blends them together a little bit. Gives it a nice transition between the land and the water. And I like that it's very soft. We may not need anything more than just that. We don't want people to really look at it. It's more there just to, I don't know, just for me. <laughs> All right, here's some nice dark black. And we're gonna do a palm tree. It's not that you get just one chance at this, but you know, it's kind of hard to redo it. So, I'm gonna, so I took that extra second. Cool. Have it really kind of growing in. I like that very, very interesting look there. All right, you, you can really let it stop anywhere you'd like. We might put another bush there. I just sort of wished in some bushes up there, but we need maybe another one down there. Kind of hard to say. We'll, we'll figure it out later, but we just add on some beautiful little, little palm fronds on here. And if you at all need help with these, We've got a great DVD on trees or download. You download it instead. It's actually a little faster that way, right? But it'll help you master your, your trees. And the nice palm tree is one of those. There's many different ways to do it. I think I show you the easiest way, but there are several different ways. And we'll just grab a detail brush and add a little detail. <laughs> oh yes, we're doing good actually going pretty quick today. Now let's go ahead and highlight this top of the wave here a second time. We already did it once as we kind of marked out our wave, but now I've got the detail brush and I'm just really dotting it. It doesn't look like there's too much paint up here, but I'm still being very careful and I'm loading a lot of paint into this brush. See that? Lots of paint. That's important. Okay, and this is already very soft and fuzzy. There's not much paint here. In fact, I even wiped this area when I was doing the background, background mountain, I wiped the uh, wiped the ocean wave part. So that way we can hopefully get a little more light right out on the edge of it. Not much, just put it on kind of thick and move on. We can always blend it with a blender brush if we need to. There, this brush is softer though, so it, it does layer on pretty nicely. It does, it does a good job. <laughs> Now I'm going to place some highlight right here in the middle. I went ahead and put some blue mid-tones. I wasn't really happy with the, I just did it quick, you know, the underpainting. So I added a lot of mid-tone on top. That was done just here with the uh, three-quarter brush. And while I was at it, I also put a little blue up on these trees. I thought that looked kind of nice, <laughs> kind of fun, wasn't it? All right, so now I'm dropping in. Just highlight only in the middle. That looks decent. I'm glopping it on thick because that gives you not only does it give you a bright highlight, it also gives you something to play with as you go. You know, you can, you can take that color and blend it. Nice. That looks pretty decent, doesn't it? It's good to do the little squiggles, but you can, you can wipe your brush out and you can do even more squiggles with just the empty brush, just to blend. There. And if at any time during this whole, you know, foreground, if it gets out of control, and it very well may, this is like the third layer of paint, then we'll just take a shop towel and wipe it off and keep going. It won't be any big deal. And a lot of the values will stay, you know, just gently blot it. You don't have to go crazy and destroy it. Cool. All right, let me, uh, let me kind of go back to a bluish tone and just kind of use that to blend the shadow side 
just a little, don't wanna to go too crazy. Now one of the last things that we are gonna do on this painting is really just finish up with a liner brush. I'm gonna put the details on my palm tree with the liner brush. I think that I'll get a better look just based on the amount of paint that I have on the canvas. Now what's fun about these is you can put the lines in and grab, this is a clean, well the handle's not, but the, the brush is, a clean detail round brush. You can blend these little lines in should something go wrong or they just get too thick or you just feel like you wanna blend them. That's something you can do, super easy. And the other thing that I was gonna mention, just so you know I didn't forget it, is the moon. I, I was originally thinking that I wanted to do something to add some color to it or I don't know. Well, I decided against it because I was looking at it from back there where you guys are and it looks good. And so if it looks good, why bother messing with it? Sometimes it's best just to leave it and lock it in as I would tell my students, right? Just don't, don't need to always mess with everything. <laughs> so there you go. That's a, and it's not, it's kind of rare. I get to show you those examples where I was, you know, planning to do something the whole time and then decided not to. So there you go. I wanted to make sure you guys kind of were aware of that. And over here, I'm going to just trace a little line under that wave right there. It just helps any of these waves that are not quite standing out enough to stand out a little more. But don't go crazy with the lines. You just don't, you don't need to go crazy. You don't need that many. I just think less is more when it comes to this sort of thing, don't you? All right, back to this brush and see these sharp ones. You can just literally touch them and they melt perfectly right into the, right into the background. Oh yeah, good, good, good. And that just adds a little sharpness, especially to this center area. All right, I'm, I'm liking this. I really am. We could go with some light ones. Let's do that. Let's get a few light ones going. The liner brush is so much fun. Not too many light ones, but just a few. Right up in here where you would expect to see them. Nice. Of course, these are obviously too sharp. So we'll just go back to our detail brush and sort of soften them. Just the edges of them. Remember this paint is thin, so you touch it once and it just fades right away. So be super gentle with that. And then the last thing, <laughs> this, is, this is good stuff here. The last thing, we're going to go ahead and just see about, well, that's not much of a highlight, see about highlighting our beautiful little palm tree up here. And I'll do it the same way. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.